With rising populations and the increased global demand for food, countries face growing pressure to ensure improved food yields and adequate supplies to meet the requirements of citizens. This growth in demand is also coupled with the rising awareness of the need to ascertain the origins of food products and the safety and quality standards applied throughout the entire food supply chain. And when it comes to food products derived from animal sources such as livestock, marine or wildlife, the need to eliminate diseases is paramount, as improving access to markets and resources that will contribute to a nation's well-being. The complex web of improving animal health, enhancing livestock products and increasing access to markets is the focus of the African Union's Inter-African Bureau for Animal Resources. Headquartered in Nairobi, Kenya, this specialised agency, which is one of the technical institutions of the Department of Rural Economy and Agriculture, plays a critical role in sustainable development and utilisation of animal resources in Africa. The agency's core motivation is improving nutrition, ensuring food security and contributing to the well-being and prosperity of the people in the member states of the African Union by delivering on its core mandates of improving animal health and disease prevention, enhancing animal resource production systems and improving access to input service and markets for animals and animal products. As a multifaceted agency, the focus of IBAR is aligned with the major goals, priorities and aspirations of Agenda 2063. Namely, Aspiration 1, which has as its goals the modernization of agriculture on the continent to increase productivity, improve food security and transform Africa into a major food exporter in the global arena. IBAR implements a number of essential interventions and projects in conjunction with a range of international partners in order to galvanize trading expertise and support animal welfare strategies, which in turn transforms livelihoods through poverty reduction. In pursuit of these interventions, the agency upholds the African Union's goal of Africa speaking with one voice on key issues and supports the formulation of consensus building and promotion of the common African position within the global animal resources arena. The Inter-African Bureau for Animal Resources, which is in short AU IVA, has the mandate to support the AU member states for the, in the coordination and utilization of animal resources. Animal resources, by that I mean livestock, fisheries, aquaculture, and livelihood. We are supporting our member states and the regional economic communities in uh, management uh, of um, animal health issues so that we protect animal health uh, so that it's able to deliver livelihood opportunities, food security, employment and other issues associated with the keeping of livestock including services to the environment. They are very key in environmental sustainability. The vast spectrum of IBAR's projects are designed to holistically transform the way all animal resources are managed through a set of harmonized and strategic methods. These include international standards and norms for trade and for animal health, regulatory frameworks for sustainable fishery and bees management, and investing in value chains, innovation and entrepreneurship. Projects are rolled out across the continent, as well as at regional and national levels, thereby strengthening the capacity and harmonising common policies between neighbouring member states. Africa has a third of the world's livestock, a full third of the world's livestock. And yet we import four billion worth of livestock products every year. The Livestock Development Strategy was developed to address four areas. The first being to increase um, investment for the development of the sector. The second one was to address the issues of productivity and production. Then it also looks at technology, 
how technology can be harnessed and other technologies to really improve the efficiency of the sector. And last but not least, looking at how instead of um, putting out their raw products, how can we add value? How can we enter into markets? I think the biggest opportunities, one some of the biggest opportunities lie in um, really addressing that four billion importation bill that we carry every year and seeing how we can um, meet the demands on our markets ourselves from within our regions. So this is what the Livestock Development Strategy really aims to do. The importance of developing and implementing stringent practices for animal welfare on the continent cannot be overstated, as animal welfare and human well-being are inextricably linked. Disregarding our animal welfare in turn leads to poor animal health and poor quality or even contaminated animal-based food products. In addition, the resulting economic and productivity loss is also felt across the wider value chains in the economy. We need to package this and talk to the various partners and demonstrate the importance of livestock. One, food security, employment creation in rural areas, issues of public health, the importance and the linkage between livestock diseases and public health. We need to get that data that's available sensitize uh, political class and other stakeholders because it's, it's, it's a very strong link between public health and animal health. Very, very strong link, but we need to demonstrate this. And policymakers may not appreciate most of them in most African countries, they are talking about even universal health care, but they may not relate that the achievement of that has to do with you managing the diseases in the animal production and animal husbandry. So I think there is quite some work to be done, do the necessary advocacy, demonstrate even the need to control animal diseases at source. The way we are doing with, with COVID-19, control it at source. Rift Valley fever, detected. Let's all mobilize our resources, control it at source. Because, for example, to trade, the, the basic requirement is that animal must be healthy. But to appreciate the need then to invest in veterinary services to provide you with healthy animals, need dialogue in the country. As an institution of the African Union, IBAR enjoys significant leverage and relationship continuity with member states, making the agency a critical instrument for advocacy and influencing key decision makers. It regularly translates recommendations into tangible and productive practices on the ground, such as developing animal resource standards and regulation to enhance compliance by member states. ICKU IBA is a big institution and they have capacity, more than Drea. We just, you know, we, we monitor, we, you know, we, we, we follow up action. But in terms of real action, concrete action, AU IBA is proactive. They have very good relationship with our member countries. They work directly, you know, with our member countries and they're doing a lot of things for our member countries. And they, they mobilize a lot of resources on animal health, on the benefits of our member countries. The activities we initiate and work with them are usually member state driven. And one area we are working with them is the area of trying to improve their veterinary registrations. Uh, because veterinary registration is fundamental in delivery of any other service because it clearly spells out the obligations of each person and each institution in the delivery of service. And the ability of these countries to protect the animal population, the, the health of animal population. IBAR is strategically placed to support Africa's blue economy agenda and is facilitating increased trade across the different corridors in Africa. Member states enjoy the support of AU IBAR when setting up fishery policies and regulatory frameworks. In addition, it helps to promote sustainable use of aquaculture resources between member states and prohibits illegal fishing activities. EU also intervention in the fishes and aquaculture sector 
is based on the policy framework and reform strategy for fisheries and aquaculture in Africa. The aim of that strategy is to support or enhance the sustainable development of fish and aquaculture for increased contribution to food security, livelihood and wealth creation. So the second area, objective of that project, what you call uh, uh, enhancing governance, was to strengthen or increase the sustainable exploitation development of the small scale fisheries. The small scale fisheries has the coastal fisheries and also freshwater fisheries like Lake Victoria, Lake Tanganyika and the like. They are very, very crucial in terms of livelihood on the continent because the aquatic resources are not, are not finite. They are not at all. Though renewable, but they have to be exploited so they can contribute sustainably to job creation, massively to the current level in terms of millions of jobs. The estimation of we are going to about 60 million jobs at the end of it all in 2006. The agency also aims to play a substantive role in reducing gender inequalities in the animal resources arena. While women already constitute 50 to 60% of the labor force in the agro and animal resources sector, entrenched inequalities remain due to patriarchal norms. IBAR's projects are promoting increased participation for women and young people in the sector to foster greater access and control over their own resource and output. Critically, because of the urbanization of Africa, we see the growing demand for animal source uh, foods. So we want to attract more women and youth into the sector. So we have put in place the networks. With the youth and also with the women, to a large extent, we are doing support for startups and for incubation so that they are skilled to learn how to, to run uh, livestock enterprises. We are going to capacitate women to attract more investments, also to uh, manage their businesses, so the business management aspects, and then also trade. So a few women are really ready for trade, but we're going to capacitate them to know the demands. What should you do uh, and to enter into trade? So we are trying to push women from just looking at domestic markets and uh, move to regional markets and even continental markets. While the predicted future population increase in Africa will put pressure on food and nutritional security, animal livestock welfare protection and improvement will remain at the forefront of AU IBAR in order to safeguard the health and development of all our citizens. People appreciate our animal resource food, but not so much how they're produced. So I think there is very great need for greater visibility for the sector because it has great opportunities for jobs, for nutrition, for food security, um, even for industrial growth, which is one of our goals in the Agenda 63. The achievement of the aspirations of Agenda 2063 we really depend on how much we invest in the livestock sector, given the contribution of the sector to the agricultural GDP of most of our countries. In some of the countries, it will hit up to 40%. And therefore, if we have to deal with poverty, if we have to deal with hunger, if we have to promote intra-Africa trade, we have no option but really to support animal health services in our member states. And AIBA is in the forefront to support our member states to achieve their aspirations. Mm -hmm.